Right, Tony, you're back at Wembley. How does it feel? Yeah, we're excited, Gary. Yeah, really excited. Uh, you know, as a team, we're excited. You know, we've worked hard to to get there, and after the last couple of years of not getting to a, a major final, we're excited for the fans. You know, and that we're you know, the supporters that have stuck with us, and you know, saw seen us through. Not, I'm not going to say tough times, but some some times where we haven't been at some of those major finals. There's only two really, you know, major finals that everybody's competing for and uh, it's hard, it's hard to get there each and every year and um, I know once you get tastes of them, you want more of them and we're no different as, as coaches and players, uh, we've we've been striving to get back and, you know, just got to the final hurdle a, a couple of times in the last couple of years when it comes to Wembley and they've not quite made it but... Um, uh, we we made it this time and we're pretty comprehensive as well with it. I uh, thought it was... Uh, were you surprised by the margin of victory? Uh, I won't say surprised. Um, it's nothing that you can predict, um, that's for sure. But, uh, you know, I, I know we've got good try-scoring capabilities as well as, you know, defensively I think we missed seven or eight tackles in that whole match, um, which is pretty remarkable as well. So... Yeah, hey, things went our way, but we made things go our way on the weekend. Um, we made our own luck, you know, and which and um, that's important. You know, when you work hard, you usually get a bit luckier, and that's what what happened with us on the weekend. And but uh, I thought we played our game plan as well as we have played any game plan this year, and we stuck to it. I'm going to say, Wakey, are a bit decimated as well with. With some injuries, and which we have been at, at different stages as well, and you've got to be able to cope with that. But uh, it's it, it can be tough if you've not got your best players out on the park. We're in pretty good bill of health at the moment as well, so we've got a great majority of our players, our, our top line players, fit and healthy at the moment, so which is a good sign for this time of the year. Just at the right time of the season, really. Yeah, you hope so. You know, you want them all year round. But uh, yeah, no, we. We're in pretty good shape. And Have you got any injury concerns in particular at the moment? Uh, in, for this week, the only change we've got is uh, Ryan Bailey. He's got a bit of a... Uh, took a bit, bit of a bang to the knee. Should be only a week or two for Ryan. So he, he'll be the only change this week. Um, Sammy Wild comes into the squad. Uh, Sam was outstanding last week against St Helens in reserve grade. So... Uh, and Sammy comes back in. He played last time we played against Saints, so he'll be looking forward to getting another start again. So, no, we're not in too bad a shape. Um, you know, we've still got a couple of our longer term boys who, um, you know, Mitchell Dodds is probably uh, getting pretty close as well um, in the next month or so. So, we'll, he'll, he'll ramp up his training, so it'd be good to get him back at some stage. Yeah, but, uh, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're in good. Good nick at the moment. We've got a few players waiting for their chance at the moment who aren't injured as well. So, you know, they're waiting in the in the uh, background. Now you've got quite a lot of new players in the squad since Warrington last went to Wembley. Mm. In fact, uh, I worked it out. There's only four players remaining in the squad from the last time you went in 2012. So you've got quite a few youngsters coming through the ranks. Is it a, a tough job keeping them all focused on the job in hand <coughs> because it's a short turnaround for Saints? Five days, big game, because you, you want to finish as high up the league as possible. How difficult is it to keep them focused? Uh, hey, listen, is there distractions, you know, possible distractions? Yeah, but they're real distractions and they're distractions that we want to have. You know, Wembley, there's arrangements, honestly. You know, um, I can speak personally as well as on behalf of players. Uh, friends, family, um, long lost friends. You know, once suddenly lots of new friends. New friends, and yeah, I, and there's just just general all round uh, arrangements that need to be made because it's not that far off oh. that need to be put into place and planning put into place. And uh, our approach has always been get in and get it done quickly and as early as you can, so we can get on with things. And and is it and can it be a distraction? From yes, it can be, but. Um, there's times where you've got to deal with that and then just put it aside and get on with the next bit. So we're going through some of those arrangements and making some plans for what's happening down the track. But 
I'm pretty sure that the players are keen to get out there and do a good job against Saints. So um, is it tough having a five-day turnaround? Absolutely. They've done us no favours there, the people that schedule you know, games. And I don't think they actually do the game that much of a service um, as well. But um, by giving you know some teams some short turnarounds, but it is what it is, and we're not going to make excuses about it. It's, it'll be tough, but we also feel that we're up for that challenge. And um, Saints are in good form at the moment. They've been one of the form teams in the last month after you know scratch scrapping their way into the the top four, and um, you know we know how hard they can scrap. So you know we're going to be in for a scrap on come Thursday. And you've got so many players now competing to stay in the team because they'll want to pull on that shirt at Wembley. And you know yourself from previous experience, one of the hardest jobs in the game was to be telling a player he's not got the shirt. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's it's you know it can be one of the worst weeks of the of the year as well. Um, disappointing some people's dreams, you know, when they work all their life and. You know, towards a, a certain thing, and sometimes. I mean, Grixie is a classic example. Absolutely, isn't it? a classic example, Grixie, uh, which is a real shame for Simon. But yeah, you know, I've got to tell you, he handled each of those occasions like a, a, a true champion, and he'll, you know, he'll uh, certainly have the respect of many people f- from within this club uh, because of the manner in which he handles himself and handled himself at the time of either injury or disappointment of selection. So, you know, admirable. Um, and, you know, in some respects, that's, that's uh, you know, you could put that down to a, a greater achievement than, than winning any trophy. Um, when Seriously. Um, and people respect you in the manner in which Simon's respected. And it's probably, uh, you know, he, he would like the opportunity, that's for sure, to, to get out there and have a, a Wembley ring. But uh, at the same time, he's... You know, probably got greater rewards in in terms of people's um, respect. But that is your toughest job, would you say, having to say to someone they're not in the team? Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, no, it is. It's oh, you know, I've got to make selection and disappointments for on behalf of you know the the team. And but you always let your head rule your heart, or your heart rule your head. Uh, no, it, it, yeah, it's got to be logical and done for. There's no, you know, it, it isn't personal. Um, in terms of, I wouldn't pick a character. In terms of, I like him better than somebody else. You know, that's not. Um, does somebody deserve to be there before somebody else? Absolutely. You know, I've got to make some of those tough calls on people I like. You know, I like them all. Like they're all. You work with these guys and see what they do every day and. You, know, you care about them. You want them to fulfil their dreams. Part of my job is to help them fulfil their dreams. And so, if I'm going to somebody and saying, "Hey, you're not in this game," you know, in some ways I failed them as well because I, you know, they haven't been able to to play as well as they need to. But in order to gain selection, so yeah, it's tough. It's in many respects, and I've spoken to other managers and coaches when they've let them to begin. Um, it's a problem that we we want to have, don't get me wrong. Um, we don't want to shy away from having big games because you've got some of these difficulties um, of disappointing people. But uh, I've got to say, some weeks leading into finals aren't very pleasant. And they aren't very pleasant for, for these sort of reasons. And, you know, and sometimes even post-game you see... You know, most of the time people buy into it, but you know, you see some disappointments and some tears, and uh, it's it's hard for for people who you know strive really hard to fulfil their dreams, and um, for that not to happen sometimes can be heart wrenching. Yeah. But hey, listen, there's perspective with all this too. Um, you know, it's easy to go not far down the street and see somebody not you know not as privileged as. People who are sports people who get to play in big games or miss out on big games. There's, you know, there's many examples of people less fortunate than yourselves. And for anyone who might miss out on Wembley, there's always hopefully the chance of getting back in for the grand final. That'd be nice. Yeah, that'd be nice. Um, you know, Although we're looking far too ahead for that. Aren't oh, we? absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we're, we're not shying away from. We're in a ch- with a chance for uh, in a shout for all three trophies at the moment, and we n- none of them are a priority over the other. Um, we're 
we're trying our best. We want to be league leaders by the end of the the Super Eights, and we want to you know earn our right to appear in the grand final. Um, we've made our way to Wembley, and we don't just want to compete at Wembley. At Wembley, we want to you know do our best and give it our best shot, and uh, against the team that we haven't beaten this year. So you know. Um, we're in there fighting. We're we all know what a boost Wembley and winning there can bring to the town. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, they've been brilliant. You know, the Warrington people and our supporters, and you know, and it's a rugby league town. You can you can see that. Um, you know, each of the my first experience was two thousand and nine, and coming back from Wembley and just seeing you know, town hall, but the streets littered with supporters and just incredible um, and it did it showed me what it does mean to the town and you know and I've been able to see it uh, ever since you know, you know each of the and and the pride that they have in their rugby league team and uh, and and you know what it does for the town when the team's doing well I can see um, you know it, you can sense it even when you're walking around well, I think you'd struggle to replicate it anywhere else, wouldn't you? I think so. Yeah, I think so. There's, you know, there's probably some other towns that could talk about, you know, their experiences in that, they, you know, with their team. But I think it, Warrington's pretty unique, and um, you know, I know there's a lot of um, major football teams not far away, and a pretty good one um, locally now <laughs> uh, as well. But uh, really, in terms of the town sports team. It is the walls, and you know, or the wire, and um, and we're very proud of that, and we 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 also are very aware of that we represent this town and and what it means to this town. So, you know, we'll be out there fighting for ourselves as well as the club and the town. Um, come Wembley. Okay, Tony. Thanks for your time as always, and good luck at Wembley if we don't speak before. Thanks, Gary.